The aging society has been becoming a serious issue worldwide. The population aging rate is particularly high in Japan, where it has reached as much as 27.7%. One of the major issues faced by a super aging society is an increase in the number of cancer and dementia patients. Everyone hopes to maintain as decent a quality of life as possible and to have a long life even if they suffer from some health issue. One method of cancer treatment is radiotherapy, which is less stressful to the patient's body than undergoing surgery or anti-cancer drug therapy. And even elderly patients can receive it relatively easily. For this reason, technological development of several forms of radiation, including X-rays, proton beams, and heavy ion beams continues, and radiotherapy is spreading. On the other hand, no fundamental therapeutic medicine has yet been discovered for dementia. This is because accurate means to diagnose various types of dementia and to evaluate the rate of their progression are yet to be established. One method expected to enable the diagnosis of dementia is positron emission tomography, or PET, which uses radiation to visualize abnormal protein accumulation in the brain. Since the discovery of X-rays, medical science and services using radiation have been evolving. For our super-age society and for the future, QST is promoting R&D for innovative medical science and services by applying quantum science technologies. It's said that one out of every two people today suffers from cancer in their life. Treatment needs are diversifying, and there is a great demand for treatment which is both stress-free to the body and provides a cure in as short a time as possible to facilitate an early return to society. QST conducts research on heavy ion radiotherapy and uses it for treatment which can satisfy those needs. In heavy ion radiotherapy, carbon ions are accelerated up to around 80% of the speed of light in a circular accelerator and irradiated directly to cancer lesions. Radiotherapy for cancers generally uses X-rays or other means. So what is the difference between heavy ion beams and X-rays? Heavy ion beams can concentrate energy deep inside the body. That is one of their important features. X-rays become weaker and weaker according to the distance they have passed through the body. For that reason, it's difficult for them to concentrate their energy on an affected area deep inside the body. And they may damage normal cells all the way from the body surface to the periphery of the affected area. On the other hand, heavy ion beams can concentrate their energy precisely on an affected area deep inside the body to kill cancer cells. So damage to peripheral normal cells is minimized. QST established HIMAC, the world's first heavy ion accelerator for medical use in 1993. In 2016, QST successfully developed a 360-degree rotating gantry which enables irradiation from any angle. This has made it possible for heavy ion beams to be more accurately concentrated on the affected area, thereby avoiding normal tissues and organs. As the result of repeated clinical studies, in the case of lung cancer at the early stage, therapeutic irradiation can be reduced to just one day. To promote heavy ion radiotherapy, QST has put a lot of effort into various treatments and clinical studies, as well as technological and human resource development. Research and development has been carried out on a facility called the Quantum Scalpel, which will drastically downsize the accelerator to about the size of a volleyball court. 
The various technologies that QST has cultivated are applied to the development of the quantum scalpel to achieve practical use of compact, advanced irradiation technology. Heavy ion radiotherapy is effective for localized cancers, but not for metastasized or scattered cancers. So QST is working on the R&D of targeted radioisotope therapy. Targeted radioisotope therapy consists of producing a drug that combines radioactive isotopes with substances such as antibodies which tend to cluster on cancer cells and administering it. The administered drug particles circulate inside the body via the blood flow and attach themselves to cancer cells. The radiation emerging from them attacks and kills the cancer cells. In this way, metastasized and scattered cancers can be treated. Targeted radioisotope therapy uses radiation which only travels a very short distance inside the body. For that reason, it can concentrate on cancer cells without having much contact with peripheral normal cells. So it holds promise as a form of treatment which will be highly effective in destroying cancer cells with extremely small side effects. Aiming for clinical studies for targeted radioisotope therapy, by using an accelerator, QST has succeeded in producing Astatine 211, a radioactive isotope which emits an alpha ray. A radioisotope targeted therapeutic drug combining astatine with a certain type of antibody has been developed. Its efficacy was confirmed when multiple cancer cells scattered inside the body of a mouse were found to have been killed. To realize treatment for humans, QST is aiming at implementing clinical studies. It has been working on the manufacturing technology for radioactive isotopes besides astatine and R&D for a new radioisotope targeted therapeutic drug. QST is proceeding with R&D on heavy ion radiotherapy and radioisotope targeted therapy. The target is to conquer intractable cancers such as pancreatic cancer and achieve zero cancer deaths. As of 2012, there were about 4,620,000 dementia patients in Japan, and that number is expected to increase in the future. It has even been estimated that a new patient developing dementia emerges every three seconds somewhere in the world. But no drugs for fundamental therapies against dementia have been approved. It's difficult to develop drugs for the disease because there are various types of dementia and accurate diagnosis and staging of these illnesses have not been possible up to now. To make an accurate diagnosis of the type of dementing disorders and to evaluate their progression, it's necessary to confirm where and how much abnormal proteins causative of the diseases are accumulated in the brain. QST has developed a radioactive drug called PBB3, which visualizes the tau proteins that cause the death of nerve cells within the brain in many types of dementia. When administered, PBB3 flows in the blood and eventually sticks to tau molecules accumulated within the brain. When many PBB3 compounds are stuck to the tau molecules, this results in emission of a small but detectable amount of radiation. The method called PET catches that radiation and identifies the areas with accumulated tau molecules and their amount as an image. When the brain of a patient with Alzheimer's disease was scanned by PET after the administration of PBB3, it was discovered that the areas showing tau protein accumulation expand with the clinical progression of the disease. It's also becoming clear that PBB3 can be used for diagnosing diverse dementias characterized by tau accumulations besides Alzheimer's disease. Using the tau accumulation visualized by PBB3 as a biomarker, QST is conducting research on the diagnosis and staging of dementias 
as well as R&D on ways to assess therapeutic drug candidates. It's also working on practical implementation of small, inexpensive, patient-friendly pet devices for the head, anticipating the future demand for pet examination for dementia. Through all these efforts for studying dementia, QST is aiming at realizing a society in which everyone is healthy and can enjoy a long life. QST is also working on quantum imaging of brain functions, which can clarify at cellular and molecular levels how brain functions deteriorate when protein accumulates in the brain. QST is starting to apply quantum imaging of brain functions to clarify the mechanisms of depression, which continues to rise in modern society, and conduct research on the fundamental nature of people's minds and how awareness is generated. Medical science and services have progressed using radiation. And image diagnostic technology, as typified by CT, is now widely diffused. Against this backdrop, Japanese medical radiation exposure is said to be amongst the highest in the world. QST is conducting research on radiological protection to elucidate the effects of radiation on health. One of the research themes is medical exposure. Among radiological examinations, CT scans use a comparatively high dose. In collaboration with universities and other research institutes, QST has developed Waza Ari, a system whereby medical institutions can assess the medical radiation exposure dose of a patient during the CT examination. When a patient's age, gender, and filming conditions for a CT examination are input, by choosing a model with a similar body type, the Waza Ari system can estimate the organ radiation doses the patient's organs are exposed to during the CT examination. It's hoped Waza Ari will be useful for conducting an appropriate examination, avoiding unnecessary radiation exposure. Meanwhile, since the nuclear power plant accidents caused at the time of the Great East Japan earthquake in 2011, many people have been concerned about the health effects of long-term radiation with low doses. Studies of atomic bomb survivors in the past showed that when the radiation exposure dose is above about 100 millisieverts, the higher the dose rises, the greater the risk of cancer becomes. However, Expert opinions differ regarding the risks with radiation exposure of under 100 millisieverts, and future research will reveal the risks. As another theme of the research to elucidate the effects of radiation on health, QST is carrying out research on how radiation initiates cancers. Experiments with animals are carried out to clarify the radiation effect of exposure doses up to 100 millisieverts, which are generally defined as low doses. Experiments using mice, which are prone to brain tumors, revealed that the rate of cancer was similar between a group of mice not exposed to radiation and a group exposed to a low dose over a long period. Also, as a result of analyzing the genes of cancer, it was found that the group of mice exposed to a low dose over a long period had very few cancers caused by radiation exposure, the same as the group of mice not exposed to a radiation dose. In the case of the effects on health when exposed to low doses over a long term, there is currently insufficient scientific data. QST will continue accumulating data by developing animal models which can identify cancers caused by radiation, as well as extending research to the quantum level with the aim of clarifying the mechanism of cancers caused by radiation. Besides its own research, QST is responsible for organizing research results and data concerning radiation effects and protection in Japan and providing them to global institutions. The data can then be reflected in global radiation standards.
Radiation is used in a variety of fields, including industry and agriculture, besides the medical use. When we look around at the world, the construction of nuclear power plants has been continuing in the emerging nations, especially in Asia. Although they are, of course, operated with strict safety regulations, the possibility of an accident occurring is not zero. When people are exposed to a high dose or need care because of contamination with radioactive substances at the time of an accident, radiation emergency medicine is required. In radiation emergency medicine, it's important to assess and diagnose the type of radiation and radioactive substance, in addition to determining the exposure dose accurately. QST is equipped with the technologies and facilities required to do that. QST has conducted activities including the provision of radiation emergency medicine for the Torkai Mura JCO criticality accident in September 1999. The TEPCO Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plants accident in March 2011. And the contamination accident at JAEA in Oarai Machi in June 2017. QST is designated as the core Advanced Radiation Emergency Medical Support Center, which performs a central role in the Japanese radiation emergency medicine system. Whenever a radiation accident or disaster occurs, QST conducts activities that include medical support for the Nuclear Emergency Core Hospitals, located in 24 prefectures, in cooperation with four other Advanced Radiation Emergency Medical Support Centers. In cases when special expertise in medical care for radiation exposure is required, but the nuclear emergency core hospitals cannot respond, QST receives patients and provides medical care. The Department of Radiation Emergency Management, or REMAT, consists of experts on radiation emergency medicine, dose assessment and radiation protection, etc. When medical support is required after radiation or nuclear accidents, or at disaster locations in Japan or abroad, the REMAT team goes to the site to conduct necessary procedures. In normal conditions, QST prepares for radiation accidents and disasters. It carries out practical training for the staff who respond to radiation emergencies, including the doctors, nurses, and radiologists in Japan and abroad who deal with radiation emergency medicine. QST's mission is to support the safety of society which uses radiation. The use of radiation is expected to help medical science develop. On the other hand, there are concerns about its effects on health. QST studies and deals with both these aspects in order to contribute to people's health and the creation of a safer society. Furthermore, QST strives to develop medical science fields by applying quantum science technologies, search for new life phenomena tasks, and create new technologies and knowledge. <laughs>